I V M. Hey everybody, quick request once again, if you could help us out by filling out our survey, it's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. This really helps us talk to advertisers about the kinds of people listening to these shows. Really do appreciate your help and we're going to be doing a random drawing and we'll be sending out some IVM swag. Hope you enjoy that. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, Hello. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Shunitro. Hi, Farad. How's Hi, it going? It's going. It's going. Uh, it's going. How's uh, life back on the routine? Uh, uh, it's great. It's amazing. It's and actually, I'm quite enjoying this December rain and mm. uh, wintery vibes in Bombay. Yeah. But uh, wow, it's you know, it's really difficult if you are jobless for a really long time, mm-hmm. and then you get a job. <laughs> so hmm. now if I send like two emails, right? I am exhausted. Like I, <laughs> I do one Zoom call and I feel like, Bas, aaj ka ho gaya. like oh my God, it's so tiring. And I know your work routine must be like 50 emails, 20 Zoom calls, figuring out a <laughs> I honestly already don't know how you do it. So, oh my God. <sighs> And plus, I was not that well versed with this whole Zoom meetings. And mm, we yeah. always had G meets, Google meets. It's only in the pandemic that Zoom became such a thing. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So uh, for me to get used to it, oh, and then <laughs> there's Slack and there's email and there's WhatsApp and then, oh, it's, it's overwhelming. No, and on top of that, I, uh, I'm a little um, uh, compulsive about um, just how let's say a conversation uh sort of transpires on 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 zoom so for example and this is less for zoom and more for microsoft teams because uh, okay. what ends up happening is especially when you discuss uh, you're in the middle of a discussion uh, you know how on zoom like nike we're recording right now we can we can talk simultaneously right yeah, but yeah, on yeah. on microsoft teams uh if there is one, so basically, if I'm saying I am saying, and got someone, it. and like uh, you said, got it while I'm saying I am saying, yeah, neither of us will be audible to everyone. Oh, so Bill Gates is, has given up. He's and happy and, with his money. and I, it just riles me up because people just don't don't figure that like like it's it's common etiquette. Let yeah, someone yeah. finish their sentence or raise your hand yeah, Are you, let yeah. me complete my sentence and then then start talking no? so yeah, yeah that really riles me up but like oh, yeah, for me it's uh, awkward silences on uh, oh, that too I, I, I have I'm, I've given up on that because I keep saying and now I say I, I spout it out loudly guys uh, can we not have this silence like can someone yeah, this no, not even it's silence now. what happens is every time a call starts there is some small talk right there's always it starts with small talk. Like I don't oh, mind that. So I don't cool. mind yeah, that. But here's the deal. For me, it's like so. When are we going to talk about work? The moment a call is connected, I want to talk about work. You know, uh, and I don't want to sound like a dick by saying that. I'm sh- I'm all for small talk even, but I don't like meandering small talk. Like oh, no, so I mean, the, I honestly uh, don't mind it because uh, we did this. Like let's get on call. Let's get this shit done for the first few months, and now literally. We say, okay, let's take 10 minutes to just unwind and like decompress yeah, and yeah, like, you know, yeah. then get to work. Yeah. So, and in fact, so there's yeah, already I mean, a running joke in my new company where they do this, oh, Farad's doing his podcast thing. So what happens is basically uh, when they keep going on with the small stuff, okay, mm-hmm. and I'm like quick to like, because... First of all, it's defined, right? Oh, 11 to 11.45, this call mm. is this call. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to get free by 11.45 so I can go back to doing what I was doing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, so suddenly it's 11.10. We are still talking about Diwali and Christmas or Menabha <laughs> yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So I have this habit of the moment there is a second of silence, I do, okay, guys. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so now the running joke is, oh, Farad yeah. is going to do his podcast voice and that irritates the <laughs> shit out of me. No, and uh, I understand your perspective because you're also like, it's not like you're friends with these people. Like you're just, you, it's just. Exactly. Been, it's, I've it's never you. met them in my life. Yeah. yeah, sure. They give me a good salary, but like, yeah, like, you know, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I get it. I completely get it. In, uh, in other uh, news, uh, 
Wow. I, I, this might be... Uh, before, very, new, before news, uh, should we like, you know, get into the topic and then get into the news? That's what I was news? getting into. That's awesome. what I was getting into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to say this on air and it's not final and maybe I'm saying this too early and maybe none of this might even happen. But I'm thinking of moving out of Bombay. <laughs> oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons I feel like Oh my God, how will I blank? Uh, one of the big ones is, how will I record the podcast? But then I keep thinking about... The no way we are recording now. <laughs> I know, I know. Exactly. But you know what I mean? The vibe of just being in a room was so like... No, so uh, I, I honestly feel like we can do it on, let's say, you know, video chat. Because then we get to see each other. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. In so. fact, I see the other two, uh, uh, Agla Station Adulthood. Yeah, I see yeah. they already do the video version of it. And uh, we are very beautiful boys. So we should consider that at some point. Uh, And I thought I'll throw this there. And the reason I'm thinking of moving out is uh, because uh, A, it's my dad's golden years. You know what I mean? And uh, my brother who has a house bang opposite, like two minutes from my father's house. Hmm. He's offered the place to me. Like, hey man, go for it. My tenant has left. So if you want to live here for free, ah, uh, do it. And then nice. suddenly I'm like, oh, I've done this flatmate situation for the past five, six years. Wow. So I would love a place to myself. It also involves moving back to Pune because hmm. actually my eyes were set on Goa. I have another option of moving to Goa and not paying rent. Hmm. Uh, but uh, all of that aside, uh, this gesture out of the hmm. blue and Here's the deal, right? Me and my brother have been incredibly close hmm. our entire lives until the in October when I visited Pune during the pandemic. Hmm. We kind of had a few, not even fights. They were not even fights, but we had a difference of opinion on everything, including politics. Including, so it was a little confusing because uh, I don't know. Me and my brother share this kind of uh, we are always there for each other, like yeah. on a fundamental level. We really believe it. I know I'm the kind of guy that mm. if we ever, if we'll never fight over property or we'll never, I just know it because mm. we had such a horrible childhood that yeah. we kind of stuck together through it, you know. And mm. more than that, he looked out for me a lot. Uh, so, uh, uh, coming to our topic today, I thought we'd talk about siblings in general. Yeah, and yeah. And we haven't is, spoken about siblings enough. Like, really, really yeah, haven't. Yeah. And there is quite an LGBTQ angle to it, which we'll come yeah. to later. Uh, but yeah, just uh, what's it like having siblings? I believe you have a brother, right? Yeah, you have an older brother. I have an older brother. Seven and I, years. I, wow. I have an older brother who's three years older than me. Okay, okay. Uh, just straight off the bat, do you like being the younger brother? <laughs> I, uh, okay, so just disclaimer for this entire oh, episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, there be a lot of things I'll say which will make it sound like I have a chip on my shoulder. Um, okay. And I really hope that I, I'm able to explain myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and do point it out if it seems like that. Um, and coming to that, coming to the answer to my question, uh, to your question. Um, I, I don't think I have been the younger brother in this relationship for a while now. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, I think that says. Yeah, you've given us a glimpse multiple yeah. times of what your dynamic with your brother is. But yeah. if someone so, doesn't know that, like, yeah. So, I mean, in general, like I kind of, have to be the one who uh, sort of keeps it together and, mm. uh, and make the bigger decisions. Make the bigger decisions. Uh, make the make the more uh, logical life decisions. And uh, and um, and yeah, it it's a little. Uh, and I also this is that is one side of it. The other side mm. of it is that I haven't felt like I've had an elder brother for quite some time. Okay. Uh, okay you know, what comes with an elder brother in the larger parlance of, you know, relationships in the world, yeah. uh, what comes with a, an elder brother, elder sibling is uh, the sense of being, um, having someone, having, having someone have your back. And I, I don't mean my brother's malicious or anything, yeah, but it's yeah. just that uh, you 
having someone have your back uh, yeah. through action rather than promises rather than mm-hmm. words is more important to me and when actions speak then it kind of becomes a little is this something you ever conveyed to him like uh that's the other thing i think we should talk about like you know there are um i'll come to it later in terms sure. of okay just, okay yeah okay. but what about you like uh, what's your dynamic what's it like in the younger one uh, uh okay i feel uh, it starts with what my family life was like uh, we were I feel sometimes using the term dysfunctional means that we were a little functional. It doesn't mean that we were, you know, uh, Hmm. but my family had terrible communication skills. We had terrible Hmm. uh, anger issues or especially uh, from my mom's side, like, you know, a mom's side as in my mother, not like her cousins or not. My mom was a tyrant throughout her Hmm. life. And uh, the funny thing is that my brother was always the favorite mm. and I wasn't. Okay. Mm, mm. Uh, so much so if I can, and I'm not saying this to bum people out or anything, but uh, I'm just saying this because I know sometimes if you come from an emotionally abusive or physically abusive mother, uh, sometimes, especially when you're gay and stuff, you might have heard sentences like, I wish I never had you. Mm. Uh, I, uh, I was thinking of an, um, and this is, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but my mom once clearly told me that uh, I was going for an adoption, but your father, uh, adoption, I'm saying, abortion, abortion, but my, uh, but your father was very uh, keen on having another son. That's Mm. why we kept you, you know, like that kind of hurtful stuff, which I unpacked and got over Mm -hmm. the years in therapy, like. I'm not going to take that personally because yeah, I'm yeah. here and now what am I supposed to do? I can't hit rewind yeah. on her abortion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't crawl back into her womb and be like, Woo, back to the future. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, when you, uh, you know, you said, what is a sibling? I felt like uh, when we were kids, sure, we fought a lot, me and my brother, but it was over trivial shit. Why did you touch my this? Why did you? Yeah, but like of- that doesn't even matter. Yeah, that honest. doesn't like, count. That doesn't yeah. count. That all siblings go through that, right? Yeah, Why did you yeah. eat my leftovers? In yeah, the Why yeah. did you this? Why did you that? Uh, but I think as, uh, uh, because my brother is elder to me, uh, he kind of uh, developed this sense that he is the favorite. Hmm. And instead of using that against me in a malicious way, he immediately started realizing the neglect I'm going through Mm -hmm. and kind of was always the shield uh, Mm -hmm. that protected me from that kind of abuse, you know, as much as he could. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I, uh, I think that's what like made me and him as close as we are. And really, I'll, I'll tell you something. This is such a weird thing for me to say, but me and my brother are not close in terms of we don't have philosophical life affirming conversations Mm -hmm. but it is just understood that we both fought the same war we Mm. both were in the same battlefield we both saw the dangers and uh, ills of fighting that war Mm -hmm. okay and the treacherous things that come with growing up in a family that was so volatile Uh, and then now we maybe compare how we mentally it has affected us as adults and we kind yeah. of have support in that, you know, where I know, like, for example, if my brother tells me he has such a tough time making decisions, it's easy for me to therapize it and tell, is that a word? Therapize? Uh, let's, let's make, it, make a it a word. Let's make let's it a make word. It a word. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah. it's easy for me to like therapize this and be like, okay, it's a very weird word. Therapize. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a mathematical apple pie. Uh, okay. Uh, but long story short, uh, you know, it's easy for me to kind of understand why he's feeling the things he's feeling because now I'm an adult mm. and uh, he's the more financially sound. He's the more, you know, uh, he's the more like, he's he chose the safe life you know like Mm. he's he's safe like that you know uh so i just feel like we balance out each other in some weird way like i know uh because here's the deal and again i feel like i'm getting too into the nitty-gritty of my family and i know that doesn't apply to everyone else but a lot of times i don't think my brother realized that in protecting me so much or 
keeping my mother at bay from me, like protecting me from that. There was a lot of damage he incurred in the mm. process. And mm. he does not realize that. So as an adult, he's processing at 40, even he's processing psychological issues that he has no idea why he's dealing with. Mm. And for me, it's crystal clear considering I chose therapy and I chose yeah. to like work on my shit. Mm. Uh, so yeah, as in uh, well, coming back to your question, what's my relationship with my brother? It's this. It's all of this, mm. you know. Mm. On one level, I would die for him in a heartbeat and I love the shit out of him. But mm. sometimes I just wish he evolved to understand how to be a better, how he can be better emotionally, basically. Mm. Uh, mm. So that that I love helping him out with, but it's 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 quite a task. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh my god, uh, that was uh, so heavy in just, <laughs> oh my god, I said so much of my family shit. Uh, and sometimes I, this is the kind of uh, topic that makes me wonder, shit, what if my brother and my family actually heard it? I oh, would yeah. love it for them to hear it. I wow. would, but uh, I would like them to hear it posthumously, like after I'm dead. You know what I mean? No, I just, my thing I know is, the, my thing is, uh, okay, I mean, I, we, we, we are constantly, especially our generation, okay, we deal with, and not just our generation, I'm saying I'm talking about our culture, which is, you know, the Indian culture, so to say, we are plot in the middle of a culture that is so um, sort of phobic about, uh, about emotional sharing and emotional uh, sort of uh, splitting open the, the, the seams and this is maybe the only way where you where you get to know when it's almost like backbiting, you know, like back bitching. Exactly. Like, yeah. You know, I, I, yeah, like this is the only way maybe they'll come to know of it because yeah. uh, what, like, is it even possible for 80%, I would say 80 to 85 to 90% of us to have these detailed conversations with our family, you know, uh, you know sitting them down? It's not. Not really. No. Not really. But that's where siblings do come in, right? And but this is a good point to great. structure our yeah. conversation because again, we both are on different sides of the track. You know what I mean? Yeah. You are at a point where you're not that, uh, you know, in uh, cahoots with your brother. Whereas mm. I'm at a point where I can literally say anything to my brother and, yeah. you know, uh, be this. So I would like to like, right, like rewinding a bit, like uh, if you could talk a bit about how your sexuality or like, you know, affected your, uh, when, if, uh, when your brother found out or you told so, him or how, yeah. how did it evolve? I would love to hear that. There's been nothing because he just hasn't acknowledged it yet. Okay. But this has and, been a, you sat him down and told him. No, so I don't think, I don't think it's my job to sit him down okay, and tell him. Okay. So it you is, just lived your life. Yeah. I've lived my life. He's been privy to it. He's seen yeah. people in it's my obvious. life. It's obvious. Yeah. It's obvious. I mean, uh, uh, people who are not part of my family can figure I'm gay. And oh. for, for him to, I'm sorry, it's high time. It's 2020 uh, <laughs> to say that, uh, to, I, I, and, and I know where he might come from. He might come, his excuse might be, oh, I'm just letting you live your life. But you know, there is a difference between, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, letting someone live your life, uh, mm. you know, with pride, without, without butting in and without having any objection and mm. don't ask, don't tell. Like, you know, there is a clear difference between the two where you don't have any conversation, like anything. Yeah. The yeah. point is, I, you know, and that's what kind of bug. Would me. you say he turns a blind eye to it? Or like, yes. Yeah. And obviously doesn't know how to process this information or For, this. So I will kind of not. Not, like, so here's the thing. Doesn't know how to process it. He's older than me. He has to. I, I haven't seen an effort from his end to even try to process it because if if my father, uh-huh. who is um, like clearly like much older than him, uh-huh. has had far fewer uh, cosmopolitan experiences than him. If uh-huh. my father can put an effort into trying to understand this without me having to kind of, you know, push, shove stuff in, in his face every day, uh-huh. then I'm sure that, you know, he can, he can do that too. Like there is no, no acknowledgement. For example, uh, there has been no acknowledgement of the, like I, I I've sent him you know is he married sorry is he no he isn't okay no, he okay isn't. um I've sent him um 
links of this podcast and and my father actually took the time to listen to it but my brother just sent me a thumb and that's it uh-huh. a thumbs up exactly <laughs> three minutes after after I sent the link so clearly he hasn't even bothered listening to it so so that's As in, my, again you don't know that you don't uh, know I that. do know that okay. I do okay. know that when okay. someone when someone responds to you in like two minutes and does a thumbs yes, sometimes up sometimes I thank someone for sending me something and I later on get around to it you know it's like, oh please okay but whatever oh please whatever. like please and that's just, that is one of the things that really bothers me because there are all the, I mean I just feel like he's never held accountable for this I mm. because there is always an escape route where my life is just not worth talking about and not worth acknowledging and not worth uh, sort of having a serious conversation about future about mm. and um, and the moment I every single time I have tried um, there's always a like this cold silence and and there is a wall like let's not talk about it so it just i mean when that happens then it comes to a point where you have a relationship where um where you're just doing your duty and i feel like at this point of time i'm i'm doing my duty like i have a sense of uh, familial belonging when it comes to my father like i care about him i care about my father coming staying with me spending time with him i don't know if i have that with my brother anymore mm. and it's come to that and i'll you know through the episode I, there, there is a lot more that and at what age do you think this kind of thing started happening was it so right here's, from the time you're looking so no so just giving you a little bit of history uh, so the last time my brother and i were under a roof was 20 years back wait what 20, 20 years 20 years back because I was oh. in Ranchi and he left for his further studies. And then, uh, then after that, we haven't shared a roof. So we uh, shared a roof as if you meet live or you haven't met in 20 years. Oh no, 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 no. So, so after that, we haven't really shared a roof Live together. together. Okay. Live, yeah. Okay. And, uh, so obviously, I mean, you know, late teenage years while you're growing up and it used to bug me because, because he was getting, he used to be a very affectionate, uh, emotionally expressive person. And then sure. slowly, gradually I started seeing like a change and I could like now in hindsight, I figure that, you know, as you grow older, you don't want to be so outwardly emotional. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, uh, straight man sort of thing, you know, <laughs> so yeah. I get it. but. Um, after sort of, you know, I kind of moved to Pune and, you know, my mom's thing. And uh, after I moved to Bombay, in fact, mm-hmm. since then, like, it's just, there has been a, I think the Disconnect. past five years, the mm-hmm. past, the last, you know, the past five years, um, I felt uh, an emotional black hole and a wall so it's literally either either a black hole or a wall a black hole because sometimes it's just like it sucks the energy in the room where i feel exhausted because i feel like this conversation will go nowhere because you know there's no uh, again uh, but you've never felt like just blurting all of this to him like hey I feel no, like so, uh, you, if you, you need put to, this wall here's up. The thing. And, huh. No, so here's the thing. In order to blurt, you have to start somewhere. The moment I start, if it's an emotional, if it's either a wall or like a, like a cold black hole where just like, you know, all, all of everything I'm saying is just like, you know, sucked it, into the void. Yeah, it sucks yeah. sucked into the void. Then where do you go from there? Because uh, so as a result of that, the amount that I would share uh, petered out slowly, mm. gradually, slowly, gradually to a point where I just don't see a point of sharing anything with him. Like he's, mm. and, um, and it's, there are a lot of things where, uh, and this is where, you know, I, 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 I was saying that I might come off as someone who has a chip on my you, uh, uh Please, I'm going to interrupt you right there. You don't at all because Indian, what you're saying, right, Shunetro, is an experience that is commonly shared by so many people, not only friends, but so many people I know who 
have this exact kind of dynamic with their uh, siblings where mm. especially brothers yeah. where it's a oh i am okay with you living your life but yeah. that's where it ends that's it that's the line you yeah know? yeah I'm i okay tolerate you doing, like, yeah i, I, I shall tolerate your choices you know that's yeah, the, I, that's the way and i get that can be such a incomplete and insensitive feeling because yeah. in the end you all are born out of the same womb you all have literally lived your childhoods together you all have had experiences and then suddenly as adults it becomes mm. this murky complicated yeah, yeah. Uh, uncommute uh, no communication kind of mess and i i so i i there is nothing which is chip up, chip on your shoulder about this no there is there is like, there is more that i'll share which maybe again i think you would be the best judge as a as a listener so um uh, for example um the last few years it turned out that uh, that my brothers had years and years and years of alcohol abuse and because of that he's had a uh, uh, sort of you know psychotic paranoid episodes and oh and despite the despite there being interventions by friends by doctors by uh, he had to be admitted in a in a psychiatric hospital for a bit despite that he still hasn't um you know done what's need what needs to be done and at every single point in the past where where i have intervened to say what you're doing is way too much you're drinking every single day it's way too much and that's one of the reasons why it's come to a point where i feel like is there a point having a conversation with this boy because if everything that i'm saying if his mind is made up about everything in his life then everything i say i shall like why should i waste my breath because this is I going in his direction and yeah. and, and this I, is not very sorry <laughs> this is not very far from what we go through uh, at least again i have not been through this but mm. there are so many people who go through this with their parents right where yeah, yeah. they are suddenly shunned because of their sexuality or not shunned but chalo tolerated also and accepted but we won't be a part of your this lifestyle you know yeah, that kind yeah. of life uh and it's like a sibling can make you feel the exact same way too like your parents yeah, you feel like yeah. holy shit you are my fucking blood you know what i mean it could yeah. be such a uh, awful feeling and i i really do feel for you and i really can't help but think that holy shit what you're saying is something so many people at least in our community go through where uh, yeah. because in a way a sibling is more accessible than a parent hmm. and in this in and when that doesn't happen you know i even i'm going to go a step ahead and say i literally know someone whose parents are fully okay with the person being gay hmm. but the brother immediately cut himself off like hmm. it literally ran a wow. crack to the frap can you imagine wow, like wow. that the parents are fine but because of whatever heteronormativity or whatever uh, whatever issues his brother had his brother kind of distanced himself from the hmm. family because to him it was such a big problem that his own brother is gay hmm. and so I I get it right like for for us it's one thing but for <coughs> someone else seeing it the yeah, yeah. an entirely different perception and yeah. there's no way to like communicate that and it's 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 a very awkward place to be I yeah, can imagine Yeah 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 huh? Yeah I mean see the, there is a there is and I would like to talk about and there is a lot more to unspool I think we should take a tiny break and then come back yeah, but sure. there is a lot to talk about um the ideal relationship that we would maybe want out of our our siblings and i hope that you know siblings out there listen to it and let's come sure. back and maybe discuss that absolutely quick break see you on the other side yep hello everybody welcome to another week on the ivm podcast network if you're not following us on social media please do we're ivm podcast on twitter facebook and instagram once again just a quick reminder please do help us out by filling out our survey it's at ivmpodcast.com/survey It really does help us figure out who's listening and you know what are the characteristics that we can go and push to advertisers that is massively helpful to us please 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 do help out with that. So on the network this week let me start with a quick milestone is the 100th episode of Begin the Journey with Ashish Vidyarthi. Congratulations to Ashish and the team. Great show. If you're not listening to it he talks to you about just how to approach life. It's just very very cool stuff. Do check this out. 
Want to mention the note with Maruki Naya? She talks about why petrol prices are so high. On the Wired talk, Siddharth speaks with Harsh Munder. On Advertising is Dead, Varun speaks to Kabir Biswas, the founder of Dunzo. They have a really interesting conversation about, you know, what's the future of Dunzo and what they're thinking about. On the Traveling Professor's Diaries, check out Siddharth talk about the performance paradox. I found it really fascinating and interesting. I think that you guys will really get something out of listening to that. Please do give that a listen. And finally, let me mention Zindagi Diaries. It's Ragini Kumar's poetry podcast. The first week when it came out, we put out five poems first week. We put out another five poems this week. And the response has been phenomenal. Do check it out. It's in Hindi. It's a poetry podcast. Something a little different. Do give it a shot and let us know what you think. And with that, let me get you back to your show. And we're back. So we were talking about siblings. And what I want to ask you, Farad, is... Uh, mm. So I know you you spoke about your brother being, you know, this... Uh, he was like this bright ray of sunshine in, in what could have been... No, no, no. That's not, 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 not yeah, too yeah. much. He, yeah, was, but he, he was, was a solid a, pillar. He was yeah, something yeah, he was, was concrete to lean on. Yeah. yeah. And it, uh, so if you had to kind of let's say wave a magic wand and, and and make it the ideal what would what would you have this relationship be like what would you maybe what would you tweak in him in his experience in him, sure but for that i have to give you a little context of what sure. he used to be before sure, that sure. and uh, uh, just quickly to go over how my sexuality affected my brother is again entirely different and i know we have listeners who might not be out. This is such a common thing I hear where, oh, I'm out to my sister, I'm out to my brother, but my parents don't know. I mm-hmm. hear that all the time. And mm-hmm. it always makes me question that, wow, siblings in that sense are such a sweet thing to have because yeah. they are one step closer as a family, mm-hmm. but they are not your parents. But yeah. you can have that sort of like candidness also because I assume that siblings often are not very far apart in age. I'm yeah. assuming. So yeah. it's not a generational gap that you cannot like mm. talk to your siblings and yeah. they are not caught up or they are not modern, even though that also happens where you can be at the same age and your sibling might be a total fucking dick and you are mm. not. You know, of like, course, of course. Yeah. Uh, you are progressive and they are not, or the other way around or whatever. Mm. Uh my my coming out, at least to my brother. It was very simple. I never had to tell him that, hey, uh, uh, my darling brother, I'm gay. No. Uh, I remember I was in the ninth standard, uh, computers, uh, personal computers at home with those yeah. modem sounds were just a thing. And uh, I remember LimeWire, LimeWire, mm. if you remember, and Kaza, oh my God. Uh, where you used to get like 1 MB, 2 MB porn clips. Mm. And it was technically my brother's computer because back then, oh, computers are the future. So you had to take an app tech course and all of mm. that. So my brother used to extensively use the computer. And uh, obviously, I used to use it for like early MSN and early mm. Hotmail and whatever. Uh, and I remember watching gay porn back then. Uh, yeah. And I had no idea that this machine has a thing called history or mm. files get saved. And uh, obviously, I wasn't that dumb. I would delete stuff, but I did not know that, oh, there are histories and there are ways to mm. find out what uh, other people have been saying. And uh-huh. one day I remember my brother coming up to me and in Parsi asking me, to evu kind of porn kai George. Why do you watch that kind of porn? Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I just simply replied saying, because I like that. And he just laughed and that's it. That was my coming <laughs> out. That was my mm. coming out to my brother. I never had to tell him. Later on, as life went on, he's the old, like, he would know if a boy is in my life, he's my boyfriend. My parents mm. have for a while kept thinking, oh, very good friends. Huh? They ah, are it, like that it. kind of shit. But at least my brother knew that, okay, these two have a scene. Uh, my last boyfriend was actually like a big part of mm. like me and my brother and his wife's lives. Like he would, mm. he would come over, he would stay with us in Pune, all of, all of that, right? Uh, so in that sense, Great. I, I did not have uh, that kind of this. Uh, mm. But sorry, your question was if I could tweak something. I do feel again, uh, it has nothing to do with my sexuality uh, in that sense. But I do feel like my brother, the older he gets, he becomes more closed as a person. Mm. Uh, he's. I don't expect him to be as pop culturally evolved as we are or in with the times as we are. Mm. But uh, 
I do feel he's becoming a close person and because he's becoming a close person, he's becoming a cynical person. Mm. And because he's becoming a cynical person, he's becoming a more negative person. Got and it. because he's becoming a more negative person, he tends to sometimes say things where I'm like, no, no, Ronnie, that's that's a little outdated school of thinking. You can't mm. like, uh, you can't have prejudice. You can't be stereotyping. You can't be doing this, you know, mm. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Sorry, this is my first hiccup on the podcast. Could you hear it? <laughs> yeah. Did you hear it? I just suddenly hiccup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's one thing that really I feel like uh, the the more closed he gets, I feel even my window or this openness of communication mm. with that. I, I, if I can give you a visual allegory, but you know, uh, in the end of Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, you know, when the black gates... <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. open very little and that guy comes out on a horse yeah. who Aragorn yeah, just beheads in one swift Mouth of Sauron. I just feel like that uh, gate is that open right now. You know, and mm-hmm. if it shuts, I will have a tough time getting through to him. Mm. But I have to again say that that's my issue with him. I don't feel like I've ever had an issue like, oh, he's not accepting of me. He doesn't understand me. Uh, he doesn't. If I Because I'm such a transparent person that I actually don't give a shit if someone else gets me or doesn't get me. Mm-hmm. If they like for me for being transparent, then they're in my life, you know. Mm-hmm. And my brother does that where he listens to everything I say and Mm -hmm. he acknowledges that what I'm feeling is real, what I'm saying is real. Mm -hmm. And that's actually all I need from him. You know, that's beautiful. Uh, That's lovely. Yeah. That he just acknowledges uh, that I am someone who will say what's on my mind Mm -hmm. and I will never like beat around the bush because that does. And, and I, I know even, okay. So In your example, you both are not communicating. You both are a little aloof, you know, Mm -hmm. like from each other. In Mm -hmm. my case, me and my brother are close and I can say anything. And Mm -hmm. then there's the third kind where the asshole sibling outs you to your parents who wants to like, fuck you. And I think we should talk about that because that's such a big, like there are toxic siblings also Mm, uh, who who fight with you or who just want to always belittle you and put you down so they can be better in front of your parents. And those also exist. And I wouldn't know what to say about those guys because I've not dealt with that kind of... uh, Yeah, thank uh, God. I mean, I've had, I've I've seen siblings like that in uh, my family as in my extended family and the only way I've dealt with that situation is just cutting them out of my life. Like literally there is, there is no other way to deal with it because literally all other sort of, you know, siblings, like cousin siblings, all of us kind of figured. Cousin versus siblings thing because cousins you can cut out sometimes. It's With heavy blood, on the heart when yeah, it's a blood brother. Yeah, or blood absolutely. Sister. It's so much more difficult, right? Yeah, yeah. And because I just I just can't fathom what it would take for, for a blood sibling to to do that, to do like to actively court hurt and hatred uh, against someone. Because you know, like in my case, you know, at this point of time, I I do have um you know I do get annoyed. Like I'm frustrated with my brother with a lot of things, a lot of choices yeah, he's sure. made and a lot of, um, you know, mistakes he's made, but yeah. that doesn't stop me. And again, I, again, I, I don't mean to like make, you know, put myself on a pedestal, but that doesn't stop me from uh, being a, at the very elementary level, a good person and wishing exactly. him well. I don't need to have him as my best friend. And I think we've come to a point where, you know, we've had these discussions about chosen families and stuff like that. We have chosen families because our families maybe are not equipped, yeah. are not equipped. So I yeah. get that. But That's what, a good way to put it a lot of times. But when it comes to like this person being harmful to you and actively harmful to you not yeah. not like you know uh, n- not not benign harmful where i do feel like my brother is benign harmful at times because there are oh. things that he does you know choices that he makes he thinks he's making them in a way that uh, that only affects him mm-hmm. uh, but it ends up of, of affecting my father my uh, me uh, extensively now but then he doesn't know it he doesn't 
have the wherewithal to figure that his choices and the repercussions go far and wide. So I I do absolve him of that. But mm-hmm. but yeah, like what do you do when 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 your own sibling is, is it weird that I'm uh, while you're saying this, I'm thinking of the movie Skeleton Twins with oh Kirsten my God. Wig it is and her a, brother. Oh my good lord! I felt like that. Uh, the, can, I, can I be? Can I be really cheesy and corny? Yeah, you are. Yeah. You are. You are. Uh, you watch Real Housewives, right? Uh, of course. <laughs> so. Kyle and Kay- like, do you oh watch Beverly Hills? <laughs> you said siblings that so, they are those siblings of real And yeah. literally, you know what? I, I, you know, I've started identifying with Kyle Richards because yeah. you know the frustration that Sister's she feels, addiction, and this. And yes, and yeah, and, and, yeah. and just like you know, my brother has the same issues. He doesn't show up at places after saying he'll show up. He'll be late. Ah, he's yeah. just like a, like he's just not there. Like yeah. you know, he'll be in yeah. his own world and. Huh. And that frustrates me because I am not the social one. Yeah, he is yeah. the social one. And he uh, is more social. And and I have to kind of make excuses for him all the time. And Hey, but and, can I can I give you some, even though you're not asking for it, yeah. some random hope through a tiny pattern I have observed in a lot of my gay friends who are over 40 or 50. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed a lot of times siblings make up later on in life. Especially like mm. where once they've got all their shit together, and I know right now when you're going through it in real time, it yeah, might seem it like seems... it might never never remedy itself. Yeah, yeah. Especially when again addiction is a part of it. But somehow or the other, and again, I'm I'm saying the age thing, the forty and the fifty thing, is because they came from a time where, oh my God, it was it was understood that your brother might not accept you because mm-hmm. you're gay or like. Uh, but as times go on and things get normalized and things, these, these conversations are now in the fore and open and all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always some sort of like, and I'm not always is the wrong term, but I do know a lot of, and I'm saying the word pattern because I've seen it with a lot of friends where they say we did not talk our entire lives, but now we are like thick as mm. thieves, you know, like now we get along, now we get mm. along. It took years of like, some sort of healing and again it might yeah, never yeah, heal yeah. also but I guess yeah it it does happen I know it because it's something I've seen repeatedly it's not like I'm saying mm. this out of a one-off case you know no and I I, I hope it does because I yeah. I um, I wouldn't want to be I know I I'm working towards a really uh, you know, I, I, I've i said this multiple times. I court happiness. I'm a happy person. I might not be happy all the time, but I'm a happy, like, I, I like being happy. I don't like mm. being unhappy. And, mm. and as a result of that, I do feel that I have happiness to give, you know, and mm. I have happiness to give in my, uh, when it comes to you know, people I love to, to be, yeah. you know, people who are my friends and, and my family. And I just feel like he's missing out on uh, this amazing you know Person. yeah you yeah I get it I get it you just you I, I, I get it and and um, and it's just that I and I have no way of conveying it to him and I and and I want to because you know I've had imagined conversations where I've I've thrashed it out but like you know what ends up happening is so you said you imagined conversations yeah and okay. and where I've thrashed it out and all I hear from the other end is yeah. silence because that's the only thing I've heard till date. Sure. And I hope Maybe again with him shit. going through his own shit, I'm sure. Like, I'm, I, I hope so. He's not really again equipped. So. I really like the term that you said uh, families and sometimes siblings are not equipped to do this. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's not that they voluntarily want to do nothing. Yeah. They don't want yeah. have to do anything with you. They obviously don't you have are, we can say they are your blood they can also they also know that you are their blood you know yeah, uh, yeah. so i know that what's I, she for, for a second i can only think of the neve ki jad you know what i mean like yeah that's there that's there already that you are bound to your family and yeah. this is something we decided when he spoke about uh, we had discussed when he spoke about chosen families yeah you get to choose but your family you never get to choose yeah, and yeah, you yeah. get the cards you're dealt and uh, you just make the best out of that and just hope that you know like someday they evolve enough to accept you or 
Not even accept. It's not. Like I'm not looking you for, are waiting is for acceptance. Yeah, exactly. I'm not even looking, waiting for yeah. acceptance. My issue yeah. is if I can celebrate your existence and whoever you have as a partner in your life and, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, be part of the joy. Yeah. I think you owe me that. I don't know why I'm uh, analyzing this too much, but I really think it stems from the fact, Shanetra, that for a straight person, they feel they are on the normal side of history, not the right side. They mm. feel they are, they are the normal ones. That yeah, yeah. we are normal. You know, if you're gay, there is something different about you. So yeah, when you yeah. say, if I accept you and celebrate you as a person in his head, and I'm not saying only you and your brother, but I, I'm saying for a lot Largely. of times, when siblings become like that, it could be because they feel that, oh, I know you accept me, but for me to accept you, I have to accept something different, yeah, you know, which is yeah. not the case. You actually just have to accept the person for who they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you are accepting them for who they are. But they yeah. think, oh, I'm normal. You are not normal. I won't say abnormal. Yeah. But in their head, it's like, it's, but you are the like different the effort one. Has you are to, the unique yeah, one. yeah. Like yeah. I have to take an effort to even tolerate. Yeah. Like that's, also, that's me going above and beyond. You I know? have like, to say something. Can I tell you something? I remember once and it really stuck with me. Uh, again, extreme sisters, by the way. Uh, hmm. Where uh, my friend, she, she, she came out way later on in life. Uh, mm. But she very early, she came out to everyone else later on in life. But she happened to come out to her family way before. And uh, the thing is, because her parents weren't accepting uh, at all. Okay. Because they were all like, Durha milega and mm. get you married and you'll do this as a profession. Like, the, you know, typical, because it's obviously way worse for women than it is for mm. men. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this case. But what I'm trying to say is, one of the reasons her sibling stopped talking to her is because so much of the attention or became that problem. That, yeah. oh, this it had become such a big conversation in the house that the sibling started feeling neglect because that uh, her sexual, the uh, her sister's sexuality became the constant topic in the house. So she started feeling neglected. You get what I mean? Yeah. The siblings started feeling very like neglected that, oh, you stole all the spotlight with your sexuality. And that's why parents neglected me because I was just mm. normal again. Mm. So mm. I, it's, it's with siblings, it's a little tricky and dicey. Again, I'm not even talking about the toxic ones. Fuck yeah, those yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thing, who's like threatening to out you to your family. There are those types. Uh, or, you know, who, who bullies you or like who makes fun of you or is negative or like if you have that kind of sibling, fuck them. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, you, like seriously. Yeah, like you don't what need. What can I say? Yeah. And it's, I can't even say fuck them because you can cut people out of your life easily. How do you cut a sibling out? You know? I mean, the way a lot of people cut their parents out. Like, yeah, it's but I'm talking, like, it, see, it, but again, we are at an age where we figure out how to live on. Of our course, own, of course. Yeah. Like I, it comes with the same, you know, it's the same sort of journey where you, you, you work hard towards building your life, being self-dependent and, and move away from anyone who's mm-hmm. who's a detriment to you yeah who's yeah. harmful to you it can be that anyone. includes family that we that mentioned family. multiple times yeah, yeah 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 but i'm i'm just somewhere i'm thinking of the 16 year old 18 year old 20 year old who still lives with their family with their siblings uh and you know who has not figured out life yet isn't yeah. working and and they are stuck in that kind of an environment where the brother or a sister is a fucking dick and uh, the parents are fucking assholes and you can't like cutting out yeah, is not yeah. an easy option how yeah exactly because you're not in which case we've repeatedly also followed it up with a you need to figure out a way to get independent as soon as possible yeah. if you find yourself in that kind of an environment uh, which is again easier said than done but uh, it's it's one of the biggest ways out and it's one of the biggest ways for you to express grow as an individual yeah, yeah. Uh, figuring that out uh, yeah. but yeah hey sorry at some point I did not ask you if there was something you could change about your sibling you asked me but I, I, I wanted to know your answer right I Two things. I mean, one is, I think I wish he would, uh, 
he would uh, be his i i wish his emotional quotient would be a little higher so that he could mm-hmm. communicate a little more and second i think i wish he would be a little more empathetic to uh just understand that you know if if he's doing something if he chooses to do something mm-hmm. uh walk a mile in your own shoes I uh, actually walk a mile in other people's shoes and see how your actions can can affect other people can have yeah. far reaching effects on other yeah. people and yeah. I, i think these two things i uh, i wish and hope that that i mean i, I hope no, so i get a shot and see that's that's it yeah, i think that, that, that could mean the world to you you know if you just yeah, that's pretty much these it. two things because i really yeah. don't ha- expect anything else like i don't expect Uh, you know i'm i'm past that point where i need uh an elder brother to yeah. sort of you know do things to to stand you know st- give me protection provide protection this that um you know help me in my life and none of that i no don't need any of that i just need these yeah. two things yeah and can i say something totally stupid in a different tangent entirely please do but sometimes i really Found, I have found myself thinking of being so happy that we come from middle class families <laughs> because yeah. when you read about like the Ambani's, like the brothers fighting over. Oh property, my God! How would you even get out of that? Oh make? my God! I I would never because we again being gay and being this. Sure, we all have our differences with our siblings in so many ways. But yeah. imagine with. immense property and money in the mix like it, it would great. never remedy i feel yeah, like yeah, that kind yeah. of situation might oh just God. fester and fester and fester over years and ah oh, i i don't know it's I, something i've repeatedly thought whenever i've seen warring siblings yeah. in like the news or something i've always like oh that's so murky yeah oh, true i agree i agree completely terrible. wow but yeah uh, i think i i think we've covered quite a lot yeah. in this uh, yeah. Uh, yeah and uh, Yeah, uh, I I I feel like I just want to say like, uh, sibling uh, for at least for those who are stuck and have not come out yet, I do want to say that if you have some sort of cam not camaraderie but some sort of bond with your sibling, where you all can talk and uh, I I feel like that is a good. Direction to go into coming out yeah. uh, to your sibling first, you know. If yeah. if you're feeling extremely terrified of how do I come out and all of that, that's mm-hmm. the first step. Secondly, if you don't get along with your siblings, I I'd suggest being a little hopeful that someday it does work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you do get along with your siblings, uh, you're lucky, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're lucky, and if you have toxic siblings, uh, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't give them harm. Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. Okay. I Sibling. guess that's it for this week. Yep. And Siblings can't live with them, can't live without them. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. Please. Okay. You know, in Will and Grace, I love that women can't live with them. End of sentence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is such a uh, now that's quite a sexist joke. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Back then, Bye. it was like I used to use it a lot. <laughs> But well, uh, yeah, I guess that's yeah. it for this week. I, uh, yeah, I just hope everyone has a great week coming ahead, and yeah. almost there, almost there, and almost to the end of the year. Yeah, I think saying? this will be our last uh, podcast of the year. I think, yeah. So, is it? Yeah. Are we that close to the end of the year? Yes. Ooh, I can't wait for my salary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Take care, Shneetro. Thank you for talking Take to me. Take care, Farad. Uh, Likewise. I'll see Pleasure. you next Always. week. And thanks for everyone for listening to us. We'll yeah. see you next week. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Want to learn something new and have a few minutes to spare? Well, then go for the Traveling Professor's Diary. where i siddharth deshmukh the traveling professor will help you glean from all the insights that i've gained from wherever i've traveled learned taught and repeated join me every tuesday and thursday on the ivm podcast website app or wherever you get your podcasts from whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast join us tanvi and shlok 
We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday only on the IVM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's going to be lit.